Hello. Two years ago, we gave you an exclusive behind the scenes tour of M Sport Poland's Krakow facility. We're back as Junior WRC has got some exciting updates thanks to M Sport Poland. Hello, Seth. Hello, Jake. Nice to see you. You too. Good to be back. Right then, 2022, what's new? What's new? Um, there is a new car for uh, Junior WRC 2022 and it's the uh, first time ever in Junior WRC four-wheel drive car, which is Fiesta Rally 3, a car which has been designed and born here at Amsport Poland at the start of 2021. Wow, so this car is the first of its kind and it's an entry-level four-wheel drive car. And as you said, it's been designed, developed, it's been born here at M-Sport Poland. And there's a journey it goes through to, to even get to this stage, isn't there? Yes, it is. I mean, what you see here is uh, a lot of components that will go together into a complete car. Um, but already here, there is a lot of work and a lot of hours that have been put into preparing those components. Um, so, yeah, I think the best way of basically showing you how the car is put together and how it's built is to run you through all the departments and through the whole process of the of the car build. So we've got to do something a bit cheeky here. This car you see already, well, we've, we've got to go back in time, haven't we? Yes, we have, because uh, obviously it's not the first week uh, you are here to, to, to shoot this video. So we started off a couple of weeks ago when this body shell arrived from the factory as the, as the completely standard body shell. And in the meantime, the, the engine came as a complete standard engine and has been redone to Rally 3 spec. So let's put this all together um, and then let's see how, uh, like I said, how much work has been put into, into Rally 3 car. Let's do it. Let's go back a few weeks now and start a bit of an interesting journey. So we're down here in the body shop now and this is effectively where the Fiesta Rally 3 starts its journey. It comes in as a shell from Ford and Michal, who's a mechanical design engineer who actually worked on designing the Fiesta Rally 3 down to every element of the car really, is, is going to talk us through the different stages of car that we've got here, starting with the body shell. So what have we got here, Michal? Yeah, here we have uh, the series production Ford Fiesta ST body shell. We remove all the parts we, which are not necessary in the Rally 3 car. Uh, we also make some pre-cuts to prepare the car for the next station uh, where we weld some additional parts, some brackets, some weld-on parts. This one looks a lot different. It's had some things removed, yeah. but yeah. it's quite shiny inside and there's a lot more holes. What, what have we got here now? This body shell is uh, more advanced than this one. And here we have already the front tunnel welded inside the car here. This is the most important uh, station uh, on the body shell. What you can see here is the, the body shell uh, on the jig. The jig is generally the, the everything which helps us to position all the suspension parts, all the, uh, the roll cage, some uh, major brackets. The next step uh, is to send the complete body shell to the painting shop. The shell's going off to be painted now and uh, it's passed all its quality checks and the person that did those checks was this man, Carol, who's in charge of quality here at M-Sport Poland. Uh, uh, Carol, it's not the only thing manufactured here. Can you tell us what's going on behind us now? Yeah, uh, we are welding here our cross members, uh, which bones uh, rear axles for ready for, uh, crash beams and all parts which, are, which we have prepared for, the, for our cars for the next steps. And after, after uh, this uh, department, we have to take all parts for the quality control. And after all measurements and checks, we have to take the parts for the sub-assembly. Shall we take some stuff to be checked for quality then? Why not? What shall we take? Uh, we can take food course member. So this is a lot quieter and quite a bit cleaner, Carol. And uh, 
This is a very special looking table. What, what is the table first? So this is a spe special uh, measuring table, which is completely, completely flat and all the, the holes are symmetrical. And uh, on this table, we can uh, measure all the, our parts uh, with our uh, measuring arm. We have prepared five in the coordinate system. Yeah. So all the, all the places on our part have uh, saved in the, in the file. So all the, all the points have nominal dimensions. And after the measure, we can, we can check uh, the correctly of the, of the position. So, so, and now if we finish all the measurement, we can check the dimensions. Where do we go next? So after when I uh, measure all the dimensions, we have to take the part and uh, bring to the sub-assembly. So this is Kuba, one of the Rally 3 engineers. Can you tell us where we are and what we're about to do? Well, uh, so essentially we, uh, we're in the hydraulics department. So this is where we uh, prepare and service all our dampers uh, and also bits and pieces in the hydraulic power steering system. Uh, and what you can see over here is a brand new damper, uh, which is ready to be assembled. Um, essentially, once the dampers have gone through quality control, uh, we bring them over here, where we put uh, basic fluids inside, so things like slide bearing oil and damper grease and so on. And we fit, fit the dampers with the correct springs for uh, the car. And then, so basically, I think fundamentally, though, the damper and spring is actually an assembly. You can change the spring. Yes. Okay. Yes, and yes. then this just gets bolted into the car and attached yes. to the upright? Yes, it gets uh, attached to the upright uh, over on this side and then uh, attached to the body uh, on the top man over here. Uh, and this is also the place where we put the camber washers in. So uh, once we know what kind of geometry we want to be running, uh, we then um, use the appropriate camber washers to achieve that. Okay. Uh, camber angle. So I believe we're going to go and see a part that this actually connects to now that's another assembly. Yes, exactly. Let's go and have a look then. We're in another little room now, Cuba, but it, it seems like a lot more action takes place in here. There's a hammer. I like hammers. What's going on? Well, uh, this is the second part of the sub-assembly department. This is where we uh, assemble all the pieces of menu of the suspension and steering system into smaller, uh, into, into parts which we then uh, hand over to the workshop and they're fitted onto the car. So for instance, you can see over here um, the upright. Yep. Uh, this gets fitted with the appropriate uh, steering slash tie rod uh, end. And uh, we've also got the spigot, which is sometimes also called a knuckle pin, uh, which then goes into the wishbone. Uh, and the on the other side of the upright, what you've got over here is the thing that we just talked about uh, a few seconds ago, which is uh, the mounting for the damper unit. So this is uh, what you've got over here, uh, got over here is the wheel hub. This is where we start attaching uh, over on this side uh, all the things connected to the brakes and this is obviously where the uh, wheel actually attaches to these studs over here. So it's, the upright has got a hard life then? Yes, it has. It's got a very hard life, uh, but it's been very durable throughout testing and all the programs we've done so far. So, so a lot of these sub-assemblies, they're, they're taking the core and the brunt of all the, the labour that the car's going to go yes, through, basically. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, like you can see, this has been very carefully designed and uh, very carefully mounted into the chassis, so it will be able to withstand all the loads that it was required to take throughout both tarmac and gravel roads, because this doesn't change. Uh, depending on the spec. Wow, so once it, it's assembled in here, effectively the next thing that the subframe gets attached to is the car? Yes, uh, yes, once the differential is mounted in, it can be bolted straight onto the car. We've got Wukas, who's one of the engine gurus here at M Sport Poland, who knows a thing or two about this engine. How are you, Wukas? I'm fine, thanks, and you? I'm not too bad. So. What have we got in front of us here? Uh, here we have a standard uh, 1.5 uh, three-cylinder EcoBoost engine. Uh, this is our base for a Rayleigh really tree application. Okay, so um, standard power output and standard torque, what are we looking at here? Uh, for standard engine, the, the maximum power is around uh, 200 uh, brake horsepower. 
and the maximum torque is 290 newton meters. Okay, let's go to the second stand. Okay then. Right, this is very different. Exactly, this is uh, engine uh, after stripping down. Uh, so as you can see here, we have engine block ready for assembling of uh, other components. So effectively in the engine, it, it's just these three holes yep. that we're actually getting all the power from. We can say it like that, yeah. All combustion process uh, uh, have place exactly in that, uh, in that cylinder. Let's start from the uh, pistons and uh, conrods. Uh, this is component which is uh, very loaded in the engine, especially in rail application. So we need to change the standard pistons and conrods uh, to the forged ones. Okay, so as you can see, here is a uh, stock turbo. Okay. And this is our Rayleigh 3 application turbo. Um, you can recognize immediately the difference, especially that uh, the size of the turbo is, is uh, bigger. Yeah. And it allows us to increase the um, air mass flow uh, through the engine. And this is the factor uh, from which we are taking a lot of power. So there are quite a few sub-assemblies to be made, but most importantly, we need a wiring loom, and that's why we're here in the electrical department. Kuba, what's going on in here? Um, so, as you mentioned, this is the electrical de de department, which is the um, place where we develop uh, all electrical features of the car, uh, including uh, most notably the wiring loom. So, as you can see over here, uh, the guys and girls are building one of the uh, Rally 3 wiring looms. It actually takes a single person about two weeks to develop. Two a, weeks? Yes, to wow. develop a whole wiring room from, from scratch. We've got a few more people working on different sections of the room right now. Uh, and this is essentially where the wiring room for the Rally 3 was developed from uh, initial design through testing and where it's now manufactured. This is, uh, I guess, uh, the first wiring room which has been uh, designed from scratch over here in this room, exactly, and uh, which we've tested throughout the Rally 3 program. Wow. Speaking of testing, yeah. um, there is actually, um, when, when the wiring loom's been produced there, there's a way to check it all works, isn't yes, there? Yes, so essentially uh, the wiring loom is a vital piece uh, of the car and it's a vital piece of the whole build process of the car because it's one of the first things that go in. So once it goes in, it's very difficult to then take it out or swap individual parts of the loom. So what we try to do here is we've got a test bench uh, and once a complete loom has been manufactured, it's tested over here and this way we know that once it gets installed in the car, it will work. So it's a big deal, right then. Uh, we'll go and have a look at the car build now. <laughs> so Daniel is the workshop manager, so he knows how to build a rally car. And um, yeah, tell us what you do here, Daniel. All right, hello. Welcome in the workshop in N-Sport. Here we build the rally cars. First of all, we're installing the fuel hoses, and brake pipes, all uh, interior instrument like uh, fire extinguisher, uh, all electrical looms, uh, switches, battery, um, fuel tank. It's kind of crazy. We had everything on the floor before the start of the build, but when yeah. you look at just how many, how much is involved in building just it's one rally car? Yeah, it is a lot of parts, but a lot of parts, it's uh, exploded view, yeah. it's assembled. <laughs> yeah, it's, got, it's all coming together now. Yeah, it looks uh, it looks more like a rally car now. Yeah, yeah. Right then. Okay, so we'll come back in a few hours, all right. and hopefully we might have more of a rear end on the car. All right, welcome. We've seen how many assemblies and pre-assemblies go into the Fiesta Rally Free build, but there are a lot of small parts and a lot of tools that go into it as well, and that's why you need a spares man and you need a spares manager. <laughs> and introducing Derek now to, to show us through the spares area. Uh, Derek, how many, roughly, how many spare parts are in here? Oh, there's thousands. This is just a small part of our warehouse. There's another bit upstairs and behind us. So all these spares around us right now, is there an order to things? Are they like filed in a certain way? Can you walk us through and explain what is roughly where or? Yes, sure. Uh, the warehouse is divided into sections. For example, this one is engine parts. 
the one next to it is gearboxes and anything to anything related with the uh, drive lines. Uh, and the next one is suspension. So you, you know this place quite well. How does it work when the when the car's actually being built out there in the bay and the spares guys are in here? Do they literally just almost walk to the counter like you walk to the butchers and say like half a kilo of burgers, please? Pretty much. A uh, mechanic would come to the uh, to the shell here and would ask for a specific part that it requires to continue his build. Right then, there we go. So it's pretty much just like any shop, basically. Except you don't need to pay. <laughs> I'm just going to say you don't need to pay. I, I like the sound of this shop. I might come back. Literally three or four hours ago, we were stood here in this car. Literally, the front was sort of on and there was nothing on the rear of the car. And I think it looks finished now, Daniel. So can we start it up? No. OK. It is, looks finished, but it's not finished. Uh, at this moment, Kuba programming the car. OK. Uh, there he is. We've just been looking at some sub assemblies with you. So what's Kuba doing right now? I'm just like programming the car and next step it's uh, uh, leading the fuel system, brake system uh, and we're checking all of the electrical instrument works. There's no trickery here, this is the first time we're doing this. Yeah. Does it fire up first time normally? Yes. Yes. So here we go, fingers crossed. All right. First time, there we go. We've swapped the nice, dry, warm workshop where the car was built for the outdoors, and we've got Marcek back. Yes, it's time to shake the car down to make sure that we are happy with everything, how the car is put together, that it drives straight, it drives all, all the gears, and uh, make sure that when it goes to the customer, uh, he can jump in the car and go to the rally. Right, so um, rather than you explain all the different things that you do, shall we go and do it? Can we go and do it? Yeah, let's go and, uh, and have a look from inside. Right, well, I'm on that side. Okay, I'm dead. I want a new job. That was incredible. You enjoyed it? Yeah. Good. I think most of all, the thing that I op opened my eyes was, it's not just a case of driving it, there is a full on scientific process to it. Yeah, but now you have seen the whole process of how the rally car is being built um, and the check to be ready to go to customer. The work that goes into these cars is insane. It's, it's just, mind-blowing watching it go from start to finish whoever's getting chassis 50 you're getting a very very nice car and the hard work from the whole team yeah so it's just don't forget about it massive massive effort from everyone that we've spoken to in this and loads of people that weren't on camera that contributed to it so if you ever see a rally car again be very grateful um chassis number 50 yes it is let's should wait for 100 now yeah should we do another video at 100 let's try all right we'll see you at chassis number 100